Welcome to In The Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm very excited to have Matt Stone with us today, who's the founder of Buck Books. And we'll probably get into a few different things today, but I wanted to kick off the discussion about this idea of authors and authorship and why authors should move away from just being authors, just focusing on their books, just focusing on their self-publishing and focus more on the business aspect of what they do. And that's not my idea. That was Matt's when we were just talking before we started recording. So Matt, thank you for being with us today. Talk me through that. Like, What are your ideas on this? Like, What do you think when it comes to authorship and this idea of like, you know, focusing more on the business aspect of things from your perspective as somebody who works with a lot of self-publishers? Thanks for having me on, Tom. This is always cool to catch up with you and see what's going on. I started out just blogging. And then I finally got together and I pieced together a PDF. And this is like pre-Kindle era. So back in the early days of selling books on the internet, ebooks, everybody was charging a lot of money for these ebooks. Like the standard was like a ClickBank book that was $39. So in the good old days, the golden era of ebook publishing, it was really lucrative. And it was really easy to build a solid business just based on that. Because if you're getting $39 for a book, yeah, it creates quite a budget to go and, and getting the sale. You're actually taking the money from that sale immediately by processing it on your own website. That's, that creates a big budget to go out there and find your next customer. So there's really fundamentally sound businesses being created. And there's big affiliate programs on ClickBank to sell all kinds of books about all kinds of related topics. And that was just a huge party. And I never partook in that, but I, I, I started out in that era where you could slap kind of a weak PDF together and charge 20 bucks for it easy, and nobody even batted an eye at that. So I started off doing that, and then I would, you know, then I had a second book and a third book, and then I, I bundled some audio with that and some video, and before I knew it, I had like this giant library of resources, and I was getting $99 a sale to get all of these resources, and then the sort of Kindle gold rush got the better of me. And um, I decided to move everything over to Kindle. And, I, I, you know, I'm really getting to the point where I kind of feel like that was a little bit of a mistake. I mean, I, I still think Kindle is awesome. But to me, I, I just, I, I build real businesses now that sell real products and make real money. And, and Kindle to me is like this really great place to advertise and get exposure. I don't even think about it as some place to go like be an awesome author and make a great living as an author. If you have the skills to be a great author and be very successful as, as an author, you'll make 10 times as much money with those skills just in, in building like a real business. So that's, that's where I'm at. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I actually am just curious about kind of that initial period too, when people were doing this, because I do think about that. And I think maybe a lot of people, I'm, I don't know, I'm making a, an assumption here that a lot of people are like me and, and look at things and, and kind of look at how they were before and, make this assumption that they're kind of still the same way because you see the classic examples of of people who did like come out with an ebook and it just crushed it in a particular niche or industry. I mean, one of the guys that comes to mind uh, was Evan Pagan when he was doing the double your dating thing. It was like this ebook and then you're building like this massive company around this, this one successful product. But I think things have gotten a lot more competitive. And I guess my question to you is, segueing from that, like it sounds like the it has gotten more competitive. Like what are you doing in the space right now book related or otherwise to kind of stand out when it comes to to publishing? Well, you know, that's a it's an interesting question. I mean, I, I think competition is is always there. And it was competitive back in those days. And it was really hard to become a big player, maybe up on ClickBank or some kind of big affiliate network. But still I found that it was pretty easy and, and, and in a way you're not really competing. And and hear me out on this. You, you know, my site I would have books for sale and packages of books and, you know, bundled with audio and video and, you know, I had coaching and other things available. And uh, the interesting thing about when you're selling something on your website is that when somebody arrives on your website, it's not really competitive anymore, per se. It's either they buy it or they don't. You know, on Amazon, you're actually comparison shopping all the time. 
you're comparison shopping on price, you're looking at reviews of maybe a dozen different books in a particular niche to try to decipher which one is the best for you to read. To me, Amazon or you know, even selling a book in a bookstore, it's you're surrounded by competition, but when you sell something on your own website, you're actually removing that competition and you're it's just you and the customer at that point. So I never felt like I was competing against anybody. I just was out there getting publicity getting people interested in my work and then they were, you know, trickling in and a certain percentage would, would buy my stuff. You know, I was able to build it to almost a couple hundred thousand, I think about 150,000 a year in revenue. And that was before I had any idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, now that I know what I'm doing, I, I look back tragically and think about all the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars I missed by setting things up in, inappropriately. I had just so many different leaks. But yeah, I, I don't necessarily think of it as, I hate people thinking of it as being competitive and there's no way you can crack into it. I think there's so many more tools available too uh, with advertising. Um, you can always network your way with other people and get into these sort of mutually beneficial relationships and still attract potential buyers and get recommendations from people. I, I still think sound business models still work better than just putting something up on somebody else's platform and hoping it sells. Yeah, I'm I'm a big proponent of that. And in fact, it's funny cuz like even though I work with a lot of people and we do these kind of like Amazon launches or if it's like traditionally published obviously Amazon but also bookstores and stuff like that. And I think it works and it's great. I, actually most of my stuff is not on Amazon for that that very reason. The ability to like charge more, position it the way I want to position it. You know, that there's the added kind of benefits or tertiary benefits of like being able to kind of build a list, and build an audience around your work that you don't quite get just going the Amazon route. So I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Yeah, the functionality, the functionality these days is so much better than it used to be that you can do things that work so much better than they used to work a long time ago. So it's kind of a race. I mean, yes, the competition is increasing, but the tools available to us are vastly superior. And we can create these amazing funnels like drag and drop, things that were like totally out of reach uh, ten, 10 years ago when I first started. I don't think it's ever been more exciting than it is right now. Yeah, I, I think it's easier to make money now than it was back then. That's really fascinating too. I mean, that perspective because I do. I I, I get it. Like from the from the tool perspective, like there's cheaper, more effective software for just about everything. Obviously, than you know, ten years ago, and I think that would be the case for most things. But yeah, I I, I also see that competition in spurt certain like niches or industries. I I, I feel like there is a lot, um, and sometimes I feel like. There's a lot of people kind of just doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. Whether those actually pose like real like competitive, you know, threats to somebody else's business in that space, maybe not. But I guess my question is this, when you say that you think it's it's never been easier to make money in that context, like so you're saying even though maybe there are more people like kind of gunning for it, it's cheaper and easier to get get your stuff out there and then it's what is it kind of easier for you to kind of position yourself or what what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the tools are making it much better and just the science of buying online has made it better because people have studied exhaustively and split tested exhaustively so many different things and they've built amazing tools and templates to go in there and, and, and just methodologies and approaches to where you can apply those methods. It's just easier to be successful. So like you said, just like publishing a book, they buy a book, they read it, hopefully they come back to your website and maybe buy something else. And, uh, you know, a book is still awesome. I love books. I started as an author and a writer. I still have a passion for it. I even have a degree in writing from college from, you know, a million years ago. I've always been really interested and I love it. But, you know, you have the ability to create these amazing high converting opt-in pages. And then you have trip wires and one-time offers and, you know, the ability to split test a million different things. And, and what it ends up happening is you have the ability to get you know, money out of somebody right away. And then you have the ability to recycle that right back into an ad campaign. I think the biggest disadvantage of being an author only is that you sell a book and you don't get the money from the sale of that book for months. It just slows everything down. And, and obviously it's a trivial amount of money that you get for the sale of a book as well. Whereas, like I said, you just bundle it with some audio and some other things and you have an upsell and all of a sudden you're getting hundreds of dollars out of somebody instead of 999 and it makes just such a huge fundamental difference to your ability to scale and advertise and do things that you just can't do if you don't have a fundamentally sound business i want to say something about competition as well i feel like the internet 
especially if you're going to position yourself as kind of an expert in something. The internet is so incredibly collaborative. It, it's just amazing. And the more people that are in a niche, that's just the more people that you can collaborate with. And I know guys like you and me, the majority of the marketing that we do is collaborative. You know, there's so many different gurus to find in a particular niche and you connect with those people, you build a relationship with those people, you help those people, you put together events in that space, communicate with those people. And it, it just creates tons and tons of opportunities knowing that there's hundreds of people in your niche that have an audience. You know, you just have to figure out a way to become friends with those people and, you know, kind of network and participate and, and work collaboratively with those people, which is not hard to do. As you know, we do it all the time routinely. Well, you, well, yeah, but and I, but I don't want to underwrite it too because I think it's actually like it's actually a creative challenge in a lot of ways, and so it's like some people I think actually like are really really find that idea of collaboration really difficult. That's what I've kind of found, which is really fascinating. So I, and I, I'm actually excited to kind of take it this direction. With that in mind, like the idea of like oh, it's so collaborative. I completely agree with you. Like everything I do do is collaborative by nature. Um, whether it's you know any kind of like affiliate marketing or we're doing like cross promotions, we're doing whether it's your new book that's coming out, and we can talk about that a little bit too. But tell me this, like I think this is probably where maybe some people do struggle with it. They look at it and they say, okay, well I want to be an expert, but I'm not like person X, Y, or Z. How can you reframe that and say and 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 approach it from this idea of collaboration? Like where can I, you know, work with them? How can I work with them? Like what are your thoughts on that? Do you and do you give any advice on this this kind of concept? Yeah, I I don't have any like, you know, hard and, and firm sort of rules to obey when it comes to building your own self-confidence up to feel like you're an expert. But I I do know that there is a ton of success stories and a ton of people doing a ton of things where they're actually not positioning themselves as the expert. So I've seen a lot of business models where they're not positioning themselves as the expert, but maybe they're the one who puts together events and and works collaboratively and 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 interviews experts. And sells their products as an affiliate. I mean, I, I do that all the time. Yeah. I have I have websites that are that's the sole business model where I don't even sell anything, and you know, done six figures per year and and several different websites without selling a thing, without processing a single transaction, uh, just you know, making money off of selling other people's stuff, which is what is really e easy to do if you are able to create anything that can garner an audience, uh, whether it's a service or a product or a blog or a podcast, YouTube channel, uh, any of those things. But getting back to the point about collaboration and what we do and we kind of network and collaborate with people and, and find innovative ways to create promotional opportunities, you know, I really feel like that's just really marketing. And that's just the marketing side of things. And I, I feel like the marketing piece is the easiest piece and it's one that people are the most fixated on. And what people are really missing out on is what makes this so easy. And what makes it so easy to be successful and successful quickly is creating a great product or service and then creating an awesome process to sell that product or service to a new lead, which you could call a funnel or whatever. To me, the, that's the hardest part and also the most powerful part because if you get those two things right, then the marketing is easy. You can run an ad campaign and it works. You can create an affiliate program and your affiliates get paid well and it becomes a very attractive affiliate program, et cetera, et cetera. So I still feel, I feel like the foundation is being able to create a great product or service. And of course, there are people who just don't have the expertise or the skills to really truly be able to create an awesome product or service yet. Um, and I think that is a challenge, and they are at a disadvantage being unable to do that yet. But obviously, there's still ways to cultivate those skills. I put years into cultivating knowledge and skills in the original niche that I was in. You know, that's just kind of part of the process, I think. I've, well, I find that interesting too, and I think you're really good at it, the business aspect of it, right? Because that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm a big proponent. I love, you know, tactics and, and that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, like there's kind of fundamentals that it seems like a lot of people miss, and me too. What happens after that sale? So like people get fixated maybe on the launch, but what happens after the launch? You know, for anything, book, course, whatever it is, um, after a summit, and then I, you know, I have a conversation with somebody and they don't have like a clear anything like afterwards. It's like, well, I was going to run it, and then, you know, I don't know what you know question mark, and then make millions of dollars, I guess. So, <laughs> yeah. That's that's an awesome way to describe it. Like I don't, yeah, that's so exactly how it is for most people. It's 
build an audience and then I don't know what, but I'm sure I'll figure out a way to sell them something. And on that note, like I find that an excruciating way to proceed because then there's no money up front. You're not necessarily making any revenue. You're doing things on the hope of, of, of revenue uh, based on this promise that, well, if I build a list or if I build an audience, then I'll be able to make money from it. I mean, I think the fundamentals are true. Like if you have an audience, if you have, you know, a list of people, but there's some prerequisites there, like it's targeted, it's focused. There's a particular like customer profile. It's not just random. Here's what I'm eating for breakfast and we'll see who, who signs up. But like there's a, a actual problem that they have and you're trying to solve it and you can provide products and services for it. So talk me through that idea because you've done this, I think, multiple times where you built a service uh, or a platform and that you're able to essentially scale. And I know a lot of people you know, look at things maybe more from like a product standpoint, like, oh, I'll create a, an ebook or I'll create a course or something like that and then sell it, which again, isn't really, really a, a business. It's not a bad place to start, but it's not necessarily, it's not really a business. It's just a, it's just a product it's a thing. So talk me through how you approach something like that, whether it's starting book books or any of your other kind of companies or websites or platforms. What do you think about when you start kind of crafting out that initial idea and kind of getting it up and running? Well, I feel like I've I've just recently had another major epiphany and I've had a bunch of epiphanies along the way in my almost 11 years that I've been doing this. And I didn't study internet business. I, you know, I don't like listen to every single word that Evan Pagan and Frank Kern and all the internet business gurus say. In fact, I kind of completely detached myself from that and I've just chosen to go my own path and figure it out myself. And it took me a long time and I made a lot of mistakes and I made so many errors along the way in which I learned from, but I'm, I'm sort of realizing that I'm coming to the same conclusion of this, a lot of the internet business gurus that I probably should have paid attention from the beginning. So I have had scalability issues with the things that I've created. I have all these sites where I've done reasonably well, but I haven't really been able to continue them or scale them or really turn it into something huge. And the reason is because I get leads and then I don't get any money from those leads for months because I don't have a product for sale. And then I, I see the error in that and the disadvantage in that, and how crippling that is. And then I jump and I say, you know what, I'm going to create another website, a different website. And that's how I ended up with like, you know, a dozen websites, right? Is I keep seeing the folly in how I'm creating things. And I immediately, when I realize that I want to create something better. And so to me, I, I'd like to look at what I would consider to be the ideal business, right? The ideal business and the most powerful thing that I think you can do is to collect money from a new lead within minutes, instantly, right? So you see the best internet marketers in the world right now, somebody like a Russell Brunson, he's able to get a lead and he has a really uh, sort of shipping and handling only kind of thing that he gives them. And he gets their payment information to pay for something that's only like $6.99 or something like that. And then he's immediately able to hit them with a couple of really compelling one-time only massively discounted offers. And those offers totally make sense if you're interested in the book that he has. Of course, you'd be interested in the, in the things that he is offering. And the result is that he's able to get a lead for $12 and make $32 on that lead within five minutes. The result is that you can take the money from yesterday's ad campaign and put it into tomorrow's ad campaign and recycle it that quickly. And then everything that he does from there in terms of getting consulting clients, if he creates new products, if he promotes various affiliate offers or anything else, all of it's just gravy. He's already paid to acquire the customer. He's already paid to acquire the subscriber. And, and how he puts it is, yeah, I was making a $20 profit immediately from acquiring a customer and I was able to give away 10,000 copies of my book and make $200,000 doing that with, you know, hmm. infinite amount of opportunities to make even more off of the list that I acquired by getting those 10,000 customers in. So that's the advantage that you have by creating a real business and creating a fundamentally sound business and not just sort of publishing something on Amazon and not really thinking through anything else other than just trying to get that published on Amazon and uh, trying to obey the rules over there in terms of what seems to help someone be successful. You can be successful and people have been successful, but it's just so much easier and you can do it on so, you know, so fewer fans and followers if you set up a business that's really fundamentally sound that has those types of built-in advantages. No, 100%. And I, I love that. And I, 
I, most pro- I'm sure most people are probably nodding. I know I am. And I mean, I think the challenge though would be like, okay, coming back to that, it's like, what are the things that make kind of what Russell is an example, like successful on that? What do you think are the elements and, and, or I know you can't speak for him and what he's done, except from like, you know, third party perspective, just like looking at it, but from kind of what you're taking from this and how you're implementing it. I mean, it seems like the, the core thing is have a, an initial relatively inexpensive upfront offer, like right away. But like, that's like a piece of it. So I'm sure most people can capture like that piece. They get that understanding. What is, but what is the, what is the underlying, I guess, what, what's, what's the foundation you need to make that successful? So it's like, okay, yeah, I have this offer and then maybe I have like this upsell offer or there's something that's more expensive. But again, is there a foundation? Is, do we have to look at this like foundationally and say, well, here's kind of the pieces of the pie we need before we can implement this specific like tactic. And then once we do, then it's, it's, it, it's absolutely scalable or something like that. Tell me if that's not too broad question. Well, I think, I think you have to have something that can be of service to somebody else in some way in order to have a business, right? And there's a lot of people trying to create a business that don't have that. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for that because, you know, they just, they're coming into the marketplace with nothing to offer, hoping to make some money. And I think the people who are really genuine, who are extremely authentic, who have a genuine interest and passion for something. And because of that interest and passion, they've gone on to develop great skills, knowledge, and expertise in something specific. Then they have something that can be marketable. And they have something that can be of value that they can turn around and give a really compelling presentation of some kind or, you know, sales funnel or whatever that gets people excited about buying their product and putting it to use to better their lives in some way. Now, of course, the Internet marketers who recommend tools and services and products that help you make more money. (laughs) Well, that's obviously the the easiest way to make money because people part ways with something they think is going to help them make money much faster and much easier than they would for something that gives them something more ethereal, right? Something like, oh, this is going to help save me time. Well, that's great and all, but I'm still trading my money for something that's going to save me time. You know, it's not like uh, some Frank Kern email I just opened up where he charges, uh, he's, he's inviting people over to his house to help them with their business, and he's charging $18,000 a person. Well, mm-hmm. he can charge that because he, with his advice and knowledge and skills and experience and expertise and passion, he can help them make $18,000 or more in the amount of time that they're going to spend with him over a two-day, you know, over a weekend or whatever that he's doing this sort of like mini retreat. And so another example would be, what I'm doing right now, I'm working on creating an ad service for authors. It's mm-hmm. called Book Ads, right? Very clever name. Um, it's called Book Ads, and it's a it's a service for authors. And and instead of just like launching it out there, doing what you know, whatever, uh, we're taking all this time. We went through beta testers to make sure that we could get good results, and now we're we're we've got our first handful of real paying customers, and we're learning how to deal with handling the customers, communicating with the customers, setting up the ad campaigns for them efficiently, thinking about how it's going to be if we were to get, you know, 50 customers in a month and trying to create systems to to be able to accommodate that and still get good results. And so we're thinking through all this stuff. We're testing all this stuff. We have took on the beta clients and we've gone through the process of honing our craft to make sure that we're we now have a service that is able to give people more value than, than what they're giving us, right? There's always going to be a process of cultivating the skills, knowledge, expertise with which to be able to craft something, whether it be a product or service or a combination of both, consulting, coaching, whatever. There's got to be a process to be able to create that value in order to be able to perform that. Now, I do have some other things that in other businesses, and they were successful and they weren't I didn't have to be expert in anything, right? It was just, I got email subscribers of people interested in getting discount books. And because I did that, now I've got this great platform to promote books. So I'm now of service to authors. So I've created uh, something of value to authors and now they pay me to promote their books and I get some affiliate commission and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was able to make some money doing that. And I've replicated that model in several different ways. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be an expert in something. You don't have to be the world's guru expert in something to be able to create a product or service. There's still innovative ways to create value of some kind for somebody, even without trying to position yourself as the know-it-all. 
Mm. That's really solid advice. I love it. Okay. So let me shift because that's actually interesting. So you're doing this book ads. I love the process and the methodology, like the thought process that's going into it. I mean, I struggle with that myself too. Just like you know, erring on the side of like, I, cause I, 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 I think I have both. I err on the side of like moving too fast and sometimes move or feeling like I'm moving too slow or something like that. But finding that I think there is quite a bit of value in taking some time and saying, okay, this is, this is how this is going to work. Like this is the process here. And then knowing that, okay, once I know this, this is the, the service, this is how we deliver it. This is how we're going to generate leads for it and then close those sales. And then it's absolutely a scalable business model. I love it. So I think thinking through the process is underrated. But I want to talk a little bit about your book that we kind of hinted at before. So tell me a little bit about this. Kind of ties in with your collaboration ideas. Uh, maybe you're going to be using your book ad service for this. I don't know. Tell me, like, tell me a little bit more about this and what you're doing with it. Uh, yeah, we uh, about the beginning of 2016, I had this idea. I'm always trying to come up with creative ways to get email subscribers, and uh, the best way to do that is to get dozens and dozens and dozens of people to send traffic to you. And so to be able to do that, you kind of have to come up with something that is really cool that they'll be really eager to promote to their audience. If it's not, they won't do it. And ideally, it's got to be something that they that's free because the cooler it is and the and if it's free to boot, then everybody's really eager to go tell their email subscribers and social media followers and all that stuff about what it is because they don't get any negative feedback over it. People are really excited and psyched about it. Also, if they're participating in it somehow, that also really increases the likelihood that they'll take a chance and send traffic over to you. So I had this idea to put this book together where a lot of Internet business people, you know, wrote down their greatest secrets and their greatest failures and and contributed a chapter basically to this giant compilation. So this compilation is 101 stories and insights from all different kinds of internet businesses. The book is called Internet Business Insights. We expect to get promotion from all of those guys and a lot of outside of affiliates. And I'm sure we'll have well over 100 people promoting this thing and sending opt-ins to us. People will have a chance to opt in uh, to join our list. And when they do, they'll be notified of when the book is released and they'll get that book entirely free. So um, it also gives the contributors, it gives them a chance to share with their story with their audience. So uh, I was also thinking about a way we could tap into niches that would never promote internet business, right? Because they're like in health and wellness or something, but their, their health and wellness followers, I'm still, they're always going to be curious about how they became successful. And so we wanted to give them a chance to be able to kind of make some money off people's curiosity about making money online, even though that's not really their niche. So we have, for example, like Brandon Carter is one of the contributors. He's got 676,000 YouTube subscribers. You know, he doesn't normally sit around talking about, he, he does talk about business and making money and how he's successful some, but it's not a primary focus. And this, this gives him a great opportunity to make some money off of a niche that he wouldn't nor- normally make some money in and uh, satisfy the curiosity of thousands and thousands of his followers uh, in the book. So we just a lot of cool things like that, 101 stories like that. And uh, it's going to be a cool book. Awesome. So with that, and then also the new book ad service, when can people expect to see these things? And where can they, I guess, in the interim, depending on when this airs and when people are listening to this, where should people head over to? Where, what, what should they check out to find the book and then the new ad service? Well, if it's summerish of 2017 when you hear that, it's the perfect time to go to book ads. It's bookads.co, and at some point that might have an M on the end. Uh, that's going to be costly for us to acquire that right. domain. So if we if we make some money and things are looking great, we'll go ahead and up the ante. But for now, it's just bookads.co.co, and uh, we have just a handful of clients that we're kind of in testing mode. But those clients are getting good results. It's more of our process of how do we deal with hundreds because we, I could send 10,000 people over there tomorrow, right? But, I mean, we get completely – we don't have a system in place for handling that. I mean, it's very labor-intensive to go and create all these ad campaigns and things. So uh, it's more about refining our system and mm-hmm. thinking our process to make sure that when we do go and promote it and when the herd does arrive that we're ready. That's the biggest challenge with this business is – Figuring out how to deal with success, kind of an interesting challenge. It's a good problem to have, but uh, there's no doubt it's going to be successful. 
we just have to figure out a way to make sure we're always delivering uh, what what we're promising to do, and we're promising you know a positive ROI on your ad campaign or your money back. So we we <laughs> this is like high stakes here for us. We got to make sure that we can deliver. So that's what we're working on. And if you come over early, you know it's a great time to do it because you're going to get the best of of our skills before thousands and thousands of people are over there taking advantage of the service. So, dude, that's awesome. Very excited. Well, Matt, I always appreciate your insights. I think you're one of the people who's doing like just always like really great stuff. I just think you have great knowledge. I appreciate you sharing it with us today. So with that, I just want to say thanks for being on In the Trenches. Uh, Another place I guess people can find you also is Buck Books, right? Yeah, buckbooks.net is uh, one of the first things, one of my early successes back in 2014. And that's still a cool service. There's a million other things that I have out there. But but, uh, yeah, I think my home base for anything that's internet business related is quit in six, which is short for quit, quit six. your job yep. in six months. And it's quit the letter N and the number six dot com. Perfect. Well, Matt, thank you so much for being on in, in the trenches, man. It was a pleasure having you. Thanks, dude. Take it easy. Thank you for listening to In the Trenches. Your creative work doesn't stop here. Join the resistance, the small but growing army of entrepreneurs and artists putting a dent in the world at www.tommorkis.com. Never fight alone. Join the resistance.